You know what they don't tell you about the healing phase of life? And just healing from anything, really. It's like, growth only comes through discomfort and you just have to sit with all the negative feelings and emotions in order to heal and to grow and that this isn't permanent nothing is permanent Guys, this is what the internet has come to. Gone are the days of funny cat videos, funny pet videos. We have now arrived at a stage where every second video is women crying on camera because their relationship has imploded, because Chad didn't want them, because a man did not want to commit to her. And guys, make no mistake, this is all for attention. Okay, these people could cry in their rooms, in, you know, in the privacy of their own homes but they choose to cry on camera, usually with sad piano music, to make you feel empathetic, even though we hear nothing of the story, we don't know the man's side, hell, we don't know what's going on at all, but they sit there talking, crying about a healing process. But what is going on, guys? It is Taylor the Fiend back again with another response video. And on today's episode, guys, we are going to be covering modern women who are crying over Chad. So here we have today's next woman here. And guys, I'm just going to warn you before we jump into it. It's, it's a fairly long clip of this girl just straight up crying, saying absolutely nothing. So if you don't want a headache, feel free to just skip it, guys. Totally up to you. But today's video was made by Manosphere, guys. So don't forget to go and subscribe to his channel. I'm going to leave it pinned in the top comment. And without further ado, let's just jump right in. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and your comments. I have gave it myself to one man for a year and three months. And just one man, not nobody else. And you build so much with that person. You go through so much with that person. And my healing process. I can't tell y'all how hard it is for me to sleep. Or how hard it is for me to get up and face reality because this was not my reality a week ago. I can't tell y'all how hard it is because I love so hard and I love harder and harder and harder every time and this one hurts the most guys if there is one thing that I don't believe it's modern women crying on camera I saw a quote the other day from one of you guys in the comments that said something like two things you should never believe number one women crying in public and number two, a man smiling in public. And that kind of stuff really rings true here, guys, because notice how it's all crying. It's all emotion, which she decides to record of herself and then post on TikTok. But we don't actually hear anything of what's going on. I just think it's another dude who didn't want to commit to her. And she's, you know, all sad here crying because the man didn't want to commit. And guys, I don't believe that she saw a man because it doesn't seem like they had a relationship. I don't believe that she saw this man for such a long period of time and didn't see any other dudes at the same time. I simply don't believe it when these women come out here and say, oh yeah, I was in a situationship for a year, but I didn't mess with any other dudes. Yes, you did. You absolutely did. All these girls out here, man, they are straight lying on camera, I'm telling you. Because I really thought that I was going to marry this man. <laughs> And I get it, he's young. Why would you think that? You know, like, it wasn't like that. 
and I'm trying to be strong and it's hard. Yeah, see, she knew that it wasn't going to work out, right? She knew that everybody else thought that he was young, which basically means, you know, he was just living his life. He wasn't ready for commitment. He knew that, but she chose to mess with him anyway. And now we're ending this in tears, right? This is, this is the funny thing, guys, because you'll have these women who will select men who don't want to commit to them, and then we end up with crying TikTok videos because the man didn't want to commit, as if it wasn't completely foreseeable from the very beginning. <laughs> so, to my healing journey, um, I've already started therapy, and I'm trying to figure out ways to get up out of the, the bed and stuff like that. And um, I've changed my whole life, so it's like, it's just lessons, you know? And people be like, you know, he's young, you were stupid, um, all this shit, but he was doing things that grown ass men never did for me, um, never taught me. I experienced things that he was just so mature and just because he was young, it doesn't mean that he didn't have the ability to do so. He did. He made me become so soft, so soft, so vulnerable, so submissive. He, he made me love more. He made me love so hard. I love everything that comes with that man. I cherish and worship everything that comes with that. But I want to be honest about this healing shit. It hurts. Guys, notice how we are a good chunk of the of a you know into the video here, but we haven't actually heard anything of substance. You know, why the relationship ended? Did she even have a relationship with this man? And I'm going to guess no. This was probably just another girl to this guy. Like, it seems pretty clear that she was just another one of a bunch of women. Okay, he sounds like a guy who was better off, right? It sounds like he had some money because she said that he gave her some experiences. And notice how the previous men that she was referring to, she was like, oh, you know, these older men, they never treated me like that. So maybe this guy was younger, richer, gave her some experiences, right? And the older guys, hell, didn't even, you know, did not get... This is the funny thing, guys. Women will go out here. They will, you know, completely give themselves to men who don't put in any effort and then expect subsequent men to come in and put in effort into them. When a girl sits there and she tells you her past about how terrible it is and about how the bar is so low for men, guys, what that really means is that she accepted that. Okay, because the men aren't setting the bar for your relationships, madam. You are setting the bar. It's really funny. Like, if you think about it for two seconds and you actually watch these individuals and they're crying about men... It's all their choice, guys. Like, this is not a bad-looking woman, okay? She's got a crap ton of makeup on and all that, but she's not a terrible-looking girl. I don't know her age. It's always impossible to guess, but... Like, if this girl were to go on a dating application, guys, in any sort of major city at all, she would have thousands of people, you know, in her DMs. But we're crying about one guy because we couldn't get him. Hilarious stuff. That's my best friend. <laughs> That's really all I got. To be honest, if I was to be honest, but I can't be friends with somebody that I'm in love with. It's impossible for me. Yeah, so he didn't want anything serious. There it is, right? So this is the closest we're kind of getting to the truth here. She said, I can't be friends with someone I'm in love with. So this guy really wasn't all that interested in her. So I just said that I will take time from social media and really try to find myself again. Find myself, healing process, you know, guys, these are words that, like, are just, they're indicators, they're red flags. When a girl comes to you and she says things like, you know, oh, I had to go through a healing process after my last relationship, or any of these, like, woo-woo words, guys, you just know that they're alpha widowed, okay? They're still attached to previous guys that they couldn't get the commitment from, and they will always be attached. Even if this woman goes out here, guys, imagine this. This girl goes out here, and she gets a relationship after this guy. She's still always going to be thinking about this previous man and squaring every relationship that she has up to this one. Because I am completely in shambles this shit is hard for me um the the knots in my stomach the can't knots in my stomach the can't eat i have an appetite 
Oh, crying out of nowhere. Okay, I've had enough of this video. Let's continue on to the next one because basically all that it is is she continues crying. So let's continue into the next clip. In three months since my breakup and here with three bits of advice I wish I'd known sooner. Number one, whatever you need to feel, feel it. Suppressing any of your emotions is just going to make them resurface down the line when you actually think you've healed. Don't set any expectations in terms of how you're supposed to feel. If you think you should be sad and you're not, that's fine. If you then randomly get sad down the track, that's also fine. If you feel like going out and partying all night, great. But if you don't want to be that girl crying in the club, don't force it. Or in my case, crying as soon as you get home. The healing journey is not linear. There are lots of ups and downs. There's no set timeline of how you're supposed to feel, so be kind to yourself. Number two, connect to people that are going through the same thing. There's nothing worse than speaking to a friend who just doesn't get what you're going through and you feel like that annoying girl that won't shut up like racks. What's the, the phrase, guys? Birds of a feather flock together? Yeah, so one woman that's broken by Chad needs to go out and find another one that's also broken by tra uh, Chad, and they formulate these groups, guys, of girls who continually, you know, go throughout their life, wasting their 20s, doing the exact same... Pro guys, if you sit down and you talk to women, right, and you ask them non-judgmentally to talk about their past relationships, or some of them won't open up and say that, right, but, like, if you say... You know, what are your friends' past relationships like? They'll sit there and they'll tell you, oh, you know, this girl, this guy didn't deserve my friend and this girl keeps on getting back with her ex. Women just continually go back to their exes. They're continually attached to their ex-boyfriends. It's actually crazy, guys. It really is. And the first part of this one's video, by the way, is why you don't listen to like these dating coaches and things like this. Oh, you're allowed to feel whatever you want to feel and there's no timeline for healing and you should always express your emotions. Imagine if men were out here always expressing their emotions, guys. You know, you, you, just, you just felt, if you felt like crying, you would go out there and let all your emotions go. There is a time and a place, guys. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of these girls are truly, speci specifically as men, a lot of these girls are not worth crying over, guys. You know, they're not where I see, like, I get tons of emails from dudes who have, like, been divorced and gone through terrible breakups and stuff like this, right? Or, like, their, their girlfriend cheated on them and things, right? And they're still emotionally invested in these women. These women do not deserve your emotions. They absolutely don't, guys. No crying, no yelling, no getting angry. Just leave them to, uh, you know, to continually ruin their lives and do not save them. Speaking to people who have gone through or are going through the exact same thing is so comforting and really helps you not feel so alone. Number three, don't wish away being single. Use this newfound time to do things that you always wanted to do and just never got around to. With yeah, guys, you know, just find yourself. Whenever I hear find myself, it really just means find new men. <laughs> it, but guys, when women are out here having their, their single periods, right? And they're saying things like, I have to rediscover my identity. What that really means is we're going to go out there, we're going to have flings. There's a phrase that I heard, I can't say it on YouTube, guys, but basically, you know, I've heard a lot of women saying that the best way to get over to their ex-boyfriend is to go out and find other men. It, like, yeah, fantastic, pro fantastic problem-solving ability you have. Whether that's starting a new class, finding a new hobby, or spending time with new friends, use this new fun time. Spending time with new friends. Interesting. Time to create your own life. Especially going through a breakup where you've lived together, your whole day-to-day -day routine completely changes. This can feel quite jarring, or you can use it as an opportunity to create the life that you want to live. You never know what's around the corner, so don't wish away your single days. Focus on yourself and do what makes you happy. And this is a bonus one. Do what makes you happy. This attitude, by the way, if any of you guys are wondering, like you've gone through a long-term relationship, and then like, you know, a week later after your relationship ends and your girlfriend, your ex-girlfriend is out there partying up, getting with random dudes. It's because she was planning on, number one, she was planning on doing that. But number two, these girls will sit here and tell each other, oh, you know, just go live your best life, your single life, right? This is the advice that they give to each other. And it's just, they, they exit relationships. They go out with a whole bunch of guys. They find the guy that doesn't want them. They try and get a relationship out of him. They can't. And then the cycle just continues over and over again In, until they're like 50 years of age and they have no kids and no man wants them and they're living alone with cats. But it had to be said, time heals everything. Time is the biggest healer, so just focus on yourself and everything else will fall into place. I'm sure this is focused towards women and not men. My opinion is the opposite. If you are down because of anything in your life, focus on something and get rid of all that anger and emotions you have in you and become better. Overcoming adversity only makes you stronger. Showing emotions and crying like these women won't solve anything. 
when I am frustrated because I need to watch 40, 50 videos like this daily, I go to the gym and I think about all the delusion and stupidity in the world and I do more reps and I do higher PRs and I push myself harder so I can distance myself from people like this even more. Shout out to Manosphere, man. But I think we, me and Manosphere differ, differ a little bit here. When I finish recording a video, I just instantly forget about all these morons. I really do. It's like the last thing. I just go to the gym and that's my happy place, you know? I don't want to think about these girls crying in their car. The only time that I think about these women crying all over TikTok and girls crying about their boyfriends and whatever is when I record these videos. The rest of the time, I am literally not thinking about these individuals at all. It's a waste of mental space, in my opinion. But uh, shout out to Manosphere, guys. You see, much more mature way of handling negativity. Okay, you don't sit there, like Manosphere says, right? You don't sit there, you don't cry about it and get all emotional. You just go on and do productive things. You want to be with forever, then please listen to this so you don't make the same mistakes I did and lose I'm that all person. Is, buddy. Let's hear no it. relationship is perfect. Every relationship has its problems, its its fights, its issues, and sometimes those are problems that are reoccurring that have just never been resolved. But like, listen to this. If listen. you guys are fighting and you can't figure out like why you can't get on the same page, then this is what you do. Take your feelings and the way you feel you've been hurt and take that yeah. and, and shove it aside. This is not about you right now chances are somehow you've hurt your partner too and and they want you to hear them and you want them to hear you so you have to put your feelings aside and you have to actually put yourself into their head these kind of uh car videos guys they remind me of like you know like a toddler rambling at you i don't know if you guys have any like little siblings or maybe you've got some kids of your own or whatever but this reminds me of like toddlers and they're just like yapping their heads off saying a whole lot of nothing you know what I mean? Like, or, or when a child gets upset and they, it, like, that's what this reminds me of, these videos. Now, once you're in their head, think of the way that you acted in a situation, something you said, an action you did, then, and then think about, based on your action, how would they have felt? I want you to really feel it. Like, this is not just like, um, you know, put yourself in their shoes. Like, I need you to feel it, feel that emotion, feel their pain. And if you both do that, then you can finally get in a place where you understand each other's pain and you can just, you can make up, you can, you can forgive and you can let go. Because if you cannot do this, those, those reoccurring issues will keep coming and they will never get resolved and the anxiety and stress will build and build and build until there's nothing left to give for either of you. Don't let these stupid fights make you lose the thing that you love the most in the world it's not worth it i promise put your feelings aside empathize with your partner and just love them literally just love them like please stop fighting and just love each other if only it were that easy if everybody just stopped fighting and loved each other the world wouldn't be in the state that it's now i have my opinions on what she said but i want you guys to tell me in the comments what do you think is she right is she wrong let me know guys this woman can sit here and preach all day about you know people should have more empathy for one another but let me tell you something women do not have empathy for weak men they absolutely do not like you can sit here and you can say that women should have empathy or that people should have empathy but a lot of these girls in these relationships women really do not have empathy for men you think these girls have empathy for men when they lose their job and he can't pay the bills anymore okay or something goes wrong like no 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 what, like guys there is hypergamy for a reason okay women date across and up they don't care if you fall in the status department, they don't care if you lose your job. A lot of the times it's just over and on to the next guy. Guys, here's the thing, okay? I don't expect any of this from women at all. I really don't. I don't expect empathy. I don't expect all this kindness and crap. And this woman like making this video is not going to make any girls with their boyfriends look at their partner who is needy. It's not going to make them go, oh, well, let me try and understand his perspective. It's never going to happen. If you're a dude who's needy, you're going to push away women. It's, it's really simple, but uh, let's continue. And almost exactly a month ago, my partner and I have five years split up. I'm 24 and I don't know how to be a normal person alone. 
So here's what I've learned in the last month of being alone for the first time in five years and what that means. This is Leo. Just, just in case you're wondering. People love to say that, you know, your mid-20s are the times to find yourself. And if you're single during your mid-20s, like, that's good. You should go. What does that mean when you're changing literally every day? In your mid-20s, you are literally a different person every week. What does finding myself mean? Maybe, like... What is this logic, man? If you're in your mid twenties, you're a new person every week. Maybe you are. <laughs> like, like, you know. Can you guys imagine? Uh, this does not make sense to me. It really doesn't. Unless you have an unstable sense of self identity. Okay, like why this? This just reminds me of girls who like change their hair color every week. They're not happy. They're incredibly insecure. They put on lots of makeup. They change their appearance all of the time. Maybe you change yourself every week, but I don't understand this. Beats me. And then there's also this notion of like, once you get out of a long term relationship, people are like, okay, it's time to like, you know, I'm working on moving on and getting over it. There's no getting over it. There's no moving on because it was such a pivotal long term situation. You can feel better. You can start with someone new, but moving on and, and forgetting and whatever, that doesn't happen. And it shouldn't happen because you need to take that time and you're like, that was for me. Five years of my life, my entire early 20s. Why would I want to move on from that? It's important. Also, um, the urge to quickly start something with someone else is very pre present and, and relevant and it, it's valid. But it's so crucial to push through that urge because even if you're like, oh, it's not a rebound, this is not a, this is a really good, it is. The healing time is longer than you think it is. So resisting that urge to just like quickly jump into something with someone else is really, really, really crucial. I have to admit, this is a double standard. As a woman, you have a small amount of time in your 20s to know exactly what you want, where you want to work. Do you want a family? Do you want kids? Are you dating to marry? Or are you interested in a career? As a man, I advise anybody to not get married before 30, because by then, hopefully you have a steady job, you know more about women and how they think, you have set your goals and trajectory in life, so you are in a way, way better place to decide if you want a family or not. But as a woman, if you don't do this in your 20s, well then, you have to face the wall. The Guys, something interesting from this video here, and I agree with Manosphere for the most part. The one part where I'll, where I'll uh, disagree with Manosphere is I don't think that if you're a man in the West that you should be going out here getting married at all. I don't care if you're, you know, 20 or 45. I don't care if you have a really good job or you don't have a job at all. I don't think marriage benefits men at all, particularly in the West. That's number one. And number two, notice how this girl is like highlighting the urge to go and get with random dudes after she breaks up, right? After their relationship ends, the urge to go out there, party, get with random guys becomes really strong. This is because it's a cycle, guys. You know, they want to go out there, live their best lives, and then when they're ready to settle down, they expect a man to come and take care of them even when they have triple-digit bodies. Guys, we are going to be leaving today's episode there. Remember to leave your thoughts and your comments. If you guys have any responses to any particular videos that we've covered here today, feel free to leave them in the comments be box below. And as always, guys, make sure that you take care of yourselves, and I'll be seeing you all in the next episode. Peace. Yo, what is going on, guys? Past Taylor here. Just want to say thank you if you made it to the end of today's episode, and also to say a little bit of an announcement. Uh, we are going to be recruiting more members to Fiend Gang, so if this is something that interests you, you want to be a content creator, uh, make sure you check out the link in the video description. It's going to be somewhere near the top. There's one for a creator application, and then also, if you're someone who makes music, if you make beats, um, we're also looking for someone who can make beats for the channel as well. So if either of these interest you, make sure that you check them out. And as always, guys, just again, make sure you take care of yourselves, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. For real this time. Peace.